All right, it's time for another crappy supplement to rip on. Instagram is the gift that keeps on giving. I used to get irritated when I saw ads like this because they're so asinine and they're so misleading, it would infuriate me. But now it provides great content for me to show my knowledge base and to show real alternatives. So let's get into this motherfucker. You're a rock. You probably heard of this Tongata Lee thing. Tongata. <sighs> yes, everybody's heard of fucking Tom Cat Ali at this point. Those of us in the know tried it in 2006, and many probably even earlier than that, and we didn't get that much out of it for the reasons I've mentioned a million times. If Tom Cat Ali were a good ingredient, it would be in my testosterone booster. Now, hey, I'm open. I'm open to maybe there's an extract of Tom Cat Ali that I haven't tried yet that's actually really effective. And if I find it and try it and it's good, I will change my tune on Tom Cat Ali. And I may even add it to my product. But as of right now, it's not worthy of being in my product, the best testosterone booster out there. So you may have seen experts. And I don't like when they throw in some fucking broad to, I mean, <laughs> this is a product for men to increase testosterone. And you got some chick trying to be all sexy saying Tom Kettley. You don't look sexy. You just look stupid. On big podcasts, talk about how Tonga Lee can actually increase your testosterone 100, 200 points. But there's a. First of all, you're lucky if it increases it. If no one gets a 200 point increase with Tonga Lee. No one. 100 points, maybe. Here's the problem 100 points is not jack shit if you have low testosterone. You really think going from a total testosterone of 300 to 400 is going to make any fucking difference? 400 to 500, even 500 to 600? You're not, it's not going to make that much of a difference at all. Now, you could say that if it helps prevent your testosterone from going down, because when you work out really hard, especially as you get older, you're actually lowering your testosterone. So maybe if you take Tom Kettle and it prevents your T levels from going down, it doesn't go up, but it doesn't go down. There's some merit to that. But the ideal situation is that it goes up, which is what my T booster does. Another herb that very few people talk about, and that's Forskali. And what Forskali does is really, really powerful. It can help increase free testosterone as well as it actually helps improve fat loss and body composition. It raises a compound called CAMP. When you combine that... All right, you pretty motherfucker. God, this guy infuriates me. Forskali, maybe a 10% increase in testosterone, if even that. It is not a potent testosterone booster. It's often marketed as a fat loss aid. It's not even effective for that either. If you really dig into the data on this and forget about the fucking data, just look at user feedback. Just look at people that are on Reddit, for example. Look at what they have to say about their experience with it. It's nothing impressive. Paul and Lee and the three key minerals inside Kino Mojo, zinc, magnesium, and boron. All right, so here's what's in the formula. Tom Catali, 200 milligrams. Not a very good dose. I would say 400 to 600 milligrams is probably what you need if, if you're gonna get any kind of benefit. Forskalane, 250 milligrams. It doesn't matter if it's fucking three grams. You're not gonna get anything out of it. Zinc, 15 milligrams. It's not enough. If you're zinc deficient, 15 milligrams is not dick. It's not gonna do anything. Magnesium, 200 milligrams. Not enough. If you're magnesium deficient, you need 400, 500, 800 to 1,000 for most men. To get your, if you want to have a positive impact on free testosterone levels from taking magnesium, generally it's going to be in that 800 to 1,000 milligrams. This is something Charles Poliquin, the late Charles Poliquin, used to talk about a great deal. Magnesium and zinc are awesome, but these are not effective dosages. Boron at six milligrams, that's a decent amount. Most will do better with 10 milligrams. And this is why I don't like minerals in supplements because it has to be personalized. Me personally, I take 20,000 units of vitamin D every day. That's what I need to get into that 80 to 100 optimal range. For most people, that's total overkill. A lot of people benefit from 5,000, maybe not even more than 10,000, but it's not enough for me. So if, for example, if vitamin D were in this product and it said 5,000 units, I would still have to supplement vitamin D outside of it. So just because zinc and magnesium are in this product, you're still gonna have to take zinc and magnesium in addition to what's in here. So why even bother having it in here? Just focus on the ingredients that are not so generic. See incredible results. Now what I did differently against my competition is, I told people, before you take Keto Mojo, go and get your blood work done. Get your okay, you're so fucking clever. I told people, go get your blood work done before you buy it. Okay, was that a requirement though? Did they have to get their blood work done before they buy it? 
No, they didn't. Most people aren't gonna get fucking blood work before they buy a supplement. Blood work is expensive, and most people are just, they want an increase in sex drive, and they want an increase in gym performance, and they want an increase in intensity, mood, drive. If they get those things, they don't really care what their levels are. So very few people actually get before and after blood work. Fortunately, quite a few of my customers do, but even the vast majority of my customers do not get blood work. Not before, not during, not after. And for him to say, what separates me from my competition is I told my people to get blood work. Yeah, but you didn't require it, motherfucker. If you required it, you said, hey, before you buy this, you have to get blood work, and then we want to see your after results. No one's going to do that because you're going to sell 10 bottles a year if you made that requirement. So it's a stupid thing to say, separate you from your competition. Yeah. For blood work and three months after being on Mojo, get your after blood work. And the results we're getting on this are frankly insane. So check out what Sasha said. He DM me on Instagram and said, not gonna lie, Mojo changed my life these last three months. Results have been insane. Body fat started falling off like crazy, I don't know why. He's never been this focused before. He started getting off his act. Look, if you work out hard for three months and you have a clean diet, you're gonna make a lot of progress. I love when someone says, oh, I took turkesterone for three months and I put 20 pounds on my bench press. Why wouldn't you put 20 pounds on your bench press in three months taking nothing? If you know how to train, you're gonna make progress. Start making money and his libido used to be rock bottom and it's fully recovered. Then we had a guy, Mateo, that already had high testosterone. He was in the 800s. Well, then why the fuck is he taking a testosterone booster? He's in the 800, his, his free testosterone is mine, 120. That's where I'm at. Why the fuck are you taking a testosterone booster? And now it's at 1,000. Okay, and the free went up to 176. Now, I don't necessarily believe that someone who already has really high levels is gonna get, get that kind of benefit from this bullshit product, but that point aside, let's move on. He went on Mojo for a few months, and now he's over 1,000, and best of all, his free testosterone, that's really the most important, increased 50%. Yes, free testosterone is the most important. That's the first thing this guy said that's right. Even one of the guys that works for me, Bridger, he had high total testosterone. You really believe this guy's name is Bridger? His free was actually disproportionately low. He went on Mojo. All right, let's look at his fucking blood work. Total testosterone, 794. That's good. Free testosterone, 56. That's terrible. Three months, his strength skyrocketed, and he actually tripled his free testosterone. You say that, but we don't see the after blood work for the tripling of the free it's testosterone. Insane. You have to try this stuff with the Keto Mojo. Give it one shot. Try it for even just one month. In the first week or two, you're going to feel different. You're going to feel that je ne sais quoi. You're not going to feel jack shit in the first week or two. You're not going to feel jack shit in three months. Wake up with more energy. You're gonna have more passion and you're gonna start to see better results in the- Oh yeah, let's film a clip of me getting out of bed in my fucking skivvies. <laughs> These commercials are so fucking stupid. They, they, they're they such an insult. You know, when I watch stuff like this, I go, it's, it's so insulting to a perspe prospective buyer. Now after three months, that's really where the ingredients like Tongatali or Forskali and the minerals really start to exert the maximum benefits. And that's where you see a profound difference on your blood work. So I love the mojo. It fires. People get an increase in testosterone within the first month with bulbi natalensis. It doesn't go way higher in the third month. It goes way up in the first month and then you notice it more in the second and third month because you've had a higher testosterone level for a longer period of time. If your testosterone goes from 500 to 900, you're gonna notice it after you've kept that level at 900 for many weeks to months. That's when you really notice a difference. Not when go, going from 500 to 900, and let's say it only stays up there for a week, you're not gonna notice jack shit. It gives me an edge and I cannot wait for you to experience it yourself. Yeah, you can't wait for people to fucking spend their hard earned money on your bullshit. Now here's the product. Magnesium, now this is a good form of magnesium, I'll give them that, 200 milligrams, way too low a dosage for most men to benefit from, or if not all men to benefit from. You can get 200 milligrams from your diet. I get that when I have a bowl of black beans for dinner. Zinc, 15 milligrams, not diddly dick. I can get a handful of fucking pumpkin seeds and get 15 milligrams of zinc. Most people are gonna need 50 milligrams of zinc, maybe even higher. This is all based on blood work though and whether you have a zinc deficiency or not, it's not something you should just take indiscriminately. 
And same thing goes for magnesium. The four still in, 250 milligrams. Like I said, it doesn't matter what the dosage is. That's not gonna do jack shit. And the Tonkatali is only 200 milligrams. So the daily dosage of Tonkatali is only 200 milligrams. It's nowhere near enough to have any benefit. And boron at six milligrams may be acceptable for a few people. It's not gonna be good for anyone who, when I take 10 milligrams of boron, I get generally a 10% increase in free testosterone. <sighs> Okay, so that's all, that's all I have to say about this bullshit fucking product. This is an, and this guy's a fucking twat, Greg Gallagher with his, let's take a look at your page, with your 1.3 million followers. It's amazing to me the kind of people that have such huge followings, because this guy's full of shit. Yeah, he has a great physique, I'll give him that, and unfortunately, people are distracted by that. They think that by buying this product or following his advice, you're going to look like him. You're not going to look like him. You're never gonna look like anyone else. All you can do is the best version of yourself. You're never, ever going to look like someone else, nor should that be a goal. There's not a man alive that I look at and I'm like, oh, I wanna look like him. I like the way I fucking look. This is the way I'm supposed to look.